بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما يدي برد and sisters the Quran is a book of signs S I G N S Allah سبحانه وتعالى told us about this when he said أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لا آيات لهول الألباب. Allah سبحانه وتعالى said that verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the night and the day there are indeed signs for people of understanding. My brothers and sisters, Allah, it may be noted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned His signs, His signs in His creation. And the fact and mentioned that we need to recognize them twice in this ayah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna, which is an article of, of uh, emphasis. And then He said, La ayat. Surely there are ayat. Verily there are. So verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the day and the night, there are indeed signs for people of intelligence and people of understanding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned understanding because understanding is even more than intelligence. Because to understand implies that not only do you understand the situation, but also what caused it and what it is likely to affect in turn and what therefore you need to make, you need to do to make that effect positive. You understand why it happened, you understand what is happening, and you understand how to make it positive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the creation and all that it contains, both the objects and the process, creation and the alternation of day and night, his signs. What is a sign? And how is it different from a picture? A sign has a meaning. It points to something. It permits or prohibits something and it promises some consequences. A picture can be pretty or not, it can be simple or complex, but it is inert. It's simply there. You can look at it, appreciate it or ignore it. There are no consequences. But that is not so with a sign. You ignore a sign only at your own peril. A sign completes the hujjah completes the evidence and is itself evidence. Once there is a sign, you cannot claim ignorance. It becomes your duty to learn what the sign means. You cannot go through a red light, for example, and then claim that you thought it was Christmas decoration. You will still get a ticket or worse. Ignorance is not defense in law. Signs help us to understand the law and are the guardrail at the edge of the precipice. As Imam Ibn al-Qayyim al jawzi said something to the effect, there are two books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The open book is the creation, al-Kainat. The book which must be opened is al-Quran al-Kareem. He said there are two books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one which is open and the other which must be opened. The open book is the creation and the one which must be opened is the Quran al Karim. Both these have signs, ayats, which have meaning, which must be understood, which point to something and must be followed. The signs in the creation all point to the glory and magnificence of Allah Jalla Jalalu. The signs, the ayat of the Quran also include directions for us to lead our lives in a way that will be positive, productive and beneficial for all around and as well as earn us Jannah inshallah. Jannah is something to be earned and not inherited. Like all things which can be earned, it is open to anyone who wants to work for it. The beauty of Islam is that while we are working to earn Jannah, that work automatically gets us all kinds of rewards in this life itself. It is essential to see the benefit of Islam in this life for us to practice it fully. So let us see some of the 
signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Water is an amazing and literally out of this world substance. 70% of our body is formed of water. It's an amazing substance because it is something which is a universal solvent. It is found in all living things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said He has created everything living from water. It is something the absence of which is hazardous to life. It is lethal and having too much of it is also lethal. It is one of the most, if not the most, ancient substance on this earth. When the earth was forming, water came to the earth in the form of a storm. The same water came to Mars and Venus, but did not stay. But on the earth, thanks to its distance from the sun, the earth's magnetic field which protects us from solar flares and our own thick atmosphere, water stayed and remained in its three states, liquid, solid, and gas. It has properties totally unlike those of any other substance. It expands on solidification. It's a universal solvent, as I mentioned. It does not freeze solid when it is in a large body. It exists simultaneously in three states, liquid, solid, and gas. It constantly purifies itself and renews its supply. It changes state from liquid to gas and back to liquid and in the process releases its salts and becomes consumable by humans and animals. Trees grow because of water. As I mentioned, our bodies are 70% water and our digestive, circulatory and other body functions work because of water. Practically all life exists and is sustained because of water. Where did this water come from? Why? How much? And remember that water came here, the water that came here a few billion years ago is still here. That is the ancient, critical, incredibly complex blessing of Allah that we pollute and waste without a thought. This is also the meaning of recognizing the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His creation, which you cannot do without using the knowledge that He sent us called science. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about water, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ رَطْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah said, have not those who disbelieve known that the heavens and the earth were joined together as one united piece and then we parted them, we split them and we have made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? It is hypothesized that about four and a half billion years ago, there was another planet called Thea, about the size of Mars, which was on an intersecting orbit with us, and we met. That collision must have been awesome to, to witness. The result was that Thea's iron core sank into the young Earth's core, and most of Thea's mantle accreted onto the Earth's mantle. According to the latest geological research, if you were to peer deep into the Earth's crust, you would spot two giant blobs of rock cupping the planet's core like a pair of hands. The source of these mysterious continent-sized formation, formations, one under the Pacific Ocean and the other, other under Africa, has baffled geologists for decades. Some experts have suggested that the massive rocks are fragments of tectonic plates that got trapped under their counterparts. But according to new research, their origin may be otherworldly. A group of scientists from Arizona, Arizona State University suggested that the blobs are remnants of a Mars-sized planetary body named Thea, which struck the Earth in its infancy four and a half billion years ago. The impact is thought to have turned the Earth's surface into a sea of fiery magma and caused it to shoot out enough planetary debris to create the moon. Qian Yuan, 
the lead researcher behind the findings, studies geodynamics at ASU. He thinks that following the ancient collision, parts of Thea may have sunk and gotten preserved deep in our planet's mantle, the semi-solid layer between the Earth's crust and core. And he said that those pieces are millions of times larger than Mount Everest in volume. To give you a perspective only about the height, these rock formations are 621 miles high, whereas Mount Everest is five and a half miles high. Five and a half miles compared to 621 miles. This collision gave us the moon large enough to have the gravitational pull to give us tides in our oceans and at an angle where it reflects sunlight to give us light at night. And, and the moon also gives us our months and most importantly, I must point out, it gives us our annual controversy about moon sighting. Life would be so boring without that, wouldn't it? That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us not to worship the sun or the moon but to worship Him, Jalla Jalaluhu, who created both of them. He said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرِ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Allah said in Surah Al-Fusilat, and, and from among His signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, prostrate not, do not make sajda to the sun nor the moon, but make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created them if you really worship Him. This is an ayat of sujood, so after this lecture, please make sajda. The collision also changed the tilt of the earth on its axis by 23 and a half degrees, which gives us our seasons. Exact tilt to half a degree, not more, not less. Without this tilt, we would have had scorching heat while our side of the planet faced the sun and then freezing cold when we were faced away from the sun. When we look at the fall colors of the oaks and the aspens and the maples and the sumacs and other trees in western Massachusetts where we are, something that people from all over the world come to see and marvel at the glorious colors and shades of yellows, oranges, pinks and reds in our fall colors, let us remember that all these are because the earth is tilted on its axis at an angle of 23 and a half degrees. The tilt gives us our seasons with their temperature differences. Without it, no summer, no winter. Then ask why? Nothing is accidental ask why. Imagine our earth without water. No oceans, no lakes, no rivers, no rainfall, no vegetation, no life. Then look around yourself today during the day and look at the full moon in the night. Breathe the air. Drink from clean, unpolluted streams. You can actually do that in this part of the country. Alhamdulillah. Sail on the ocean. Sail on the ocean. Run your hand along the polished golden wood of the gunwale of the boat and reflect on the steel hull of your boat which floats. Then let us remind ourselves that none of this would have happened without the storm and the collision that Allah sent us. No wood, no iron and no water to sail it on. Today, as we live our lives, let us reflect on the storms and collisions we see or experience in our own lives and remind ourselves to look beyond them to the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which there is only khair and blessing. Biyadihi al-khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. When we do that, it becomes the strength we need to face life and its trials, knowing that the one who sent the trial will also send the solution. Knowing that the one who sent the trial did it for a reason, to teach us something that can only benefit us and which will be the means of drawing us closer to him, Jalla Jalalu. That is the only closeness that matters because it is the only one which lasts throughout our existence. It is that which is our help and protection in this life and the means of deliverance when we meet him, Jalla Jalaluhu. He reminded us about this to comfort us and give us hope. And he said, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ 
وعسى أن تحب شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون. And it may be that you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you like a thing which is bad for you. Allah knows but you do not know. Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi said, if this dunya was not a station of tests, if it was not a place of tests, it would not be filled with sickness and filth. If life was not about hardship, then the prophets and the pious people would have lived the most comfortable of lives. But no, Adam alayhi salam suffered test after test until he left the dunya. Nu alayhi salam cried for 300 years. Ibrahim alayhi salam was thrown into a pit of fire and later told to slaughter his son. Yaqub alayhi salam cried until he became blind. Musa alayhi salam challenged Pharaoh and was tested by his people. Isa alayhi salam had no provision except the morsels his disciples provided him with. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, met poverty with patience. His uncle, one of the most beloved relatives to him, was slain and mutilated, Hamza bin Abdul Muttalib, and his people disbelieved in him. The list of prophets and the pious goes on and on. This is what Ibn al-Jawzi rahmatullahi said. They were all tested severely, yet they all thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever happens to us, because Allah chose it for us. Whatever happens to us, happens because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it for us. This is what we need to remember. To be pleased, to be pleased with the qadr of Allah, rida bil qadr, not only accepting it, but to be pleased with it is an article of our faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about his tests and the attitude of the mu'mineen towards them. وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَّبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ Allah said and certainly we shall test you with something of fear and hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruits, but give glad tidings to us sabirin, the patient people, who when afflicted with calamity, they say truly to Allah we belong and truly to Him we shall return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajiun. They are those on whom are the salawat, the blessings from their Rabb. Salawatu min Rabbihim wa rahmah. And they are those who receive His mercy. Wa ulaika humul muhtadun. And it is they who are the rightly guided. Who is giving this certificate? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would we as believers say if we were asked what we were prepared to pay for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and blessings and have Him as our witness that we are rightly guided? Just think about that. What would you be willing to pay? As, what would I be willing to pay as a believer? There is no, there is no, I, I would give every, every cell in my body for that. That is the reward of sabr and shukr, patience and gratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us sabirin wa shakirin and enable us to recognize His signs and fill our hearts with His noor and magnificence to blank out everything else. That is like looking into a thousand watt halogen bulb and you turn, you only see the light, you don't see anything else. I don't advise you to do that, it will damage your eyes. I'm just giving you this as an example. And that is the route to happiness in both worlds. في الدنيا والآخرة. أعزك الله سبحانه وتعالى جل جلاله to be pleased with you and never to be displeased. أعزك الله سبحانه وتعالى جل جلاله to accept your coming. I ask Allah to accept your جمعة. I ask Allah to grant you that time, that moment, that ساعة in this جمعة where He accepts all the duas and to enable you to make duas which are beneficial for you. I ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى جل جلاله uh, to help you to do that which pleases him always. Today is Juma. Uh, in any case, it is a beautiful practice to send Salat and Salam on Rasulullah But today and Juma make a special effort to send Salat and Salam on Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taqfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunna minal khasirin. Rabbana faqfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir lana sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. وصلى الله على نبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين 
برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته